Hello, welcome back to the pair. Today we're going to be doing AFL 2023 season predictions. And I don't know what you're thinking. Why are you doing it again, Anthony? You've had a horrid run. In fact, you haven't got anything more than six right in the entire time you've been doing this YouTube channel. Well, I don't care. I'm going to do it again. So, without further ado, let's get straight into this YouTube AFL prediction saga where I just get absolutely rattled and pick absolutely horrible predictions. Um, I will say, if you are new to the channel, please subscribe for plenty more Port Adelaide content if you're a Port fan. And if you're an AFL fan, there is an AFL show coming to your screens on the pair very, very soon. It's called The Glass Table. It's presented by my very good friend, Jared Thomas. And I will be joining him as well to discuss the AFL weekly, whether it's on the field, off the field, and segments in between. It's going to be so much fun. So make sure you check that out and jump on board and subscribe for plenty more content. Okay. Let's go. Let's start the 2023 AFL predictions by the pair. Right, I'm going with a safe bet. At number 18, North Melbourne. The simple thing is, it's a new coach, it's a new era. I don't have to explain too much. The bottom four is actually quite competitive. But overall, I just feel like North's ability to just slowly improved last year was just not good enough and I don't think the spark of Alistair Clarkson is going to do enough for them to be able to climb the ladder any further at this stage. I could be wrong, I probably will be wrong, but I'm going to go with North in 18th. In 17th, GWS, probably another contender for the Wooden Spoon. Now they've got Adam Kingsley as coach. A brand new coach was a late pick in terms of uh, their coaching um you know, analysis and how they went about picking their coach. They definitely went um, on a long search, but I think they found the right person. It's a bit like when Ken Hinckley joined Port Adelaide in 2013. No one else wanted the job, yet they, they went with the right candidate. Well, some would debate that, but um, they went with the candidate they were very comfortable with, very confident in, and he might not, not have been the best person, but he definitely could be the right person. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing what he does with a completely slated list, a brand new captain in Toby Green, going into 2023 with no expectations and just the eagerness to improve. In 16th, I have the Hawks. Now, a lot of people are slating them to be in uh, that wooden spoon position as well. Um, with Sam Mitchell's coach, I think overall, they're going to have a good crop of young players. They're going to improve again. I feel like they have uh, an energy about them that can jump a few teams this year. They pro provided that a lot of last year as well. They've cleaned out a little bit, um, but they've also brought in some, some great talent. And I think overall, they're going to have a good crop of young players um, really in a strong position to take their team forward. Um, and w what happens there is that, you know, they have to win the games that they, they probably expect to win. And there might not be a lot of those, but if they do that, they'll gain some confidence and they'll win games like they did against Port Adelaide last year at Adelaide Oval, where they won by... 10 goals, you know, they're, they're going to surprise a few teams and really, um, they're going to have a really successful year, although they'll be finishing 16th. In 15th, I have West Coast. Now, I do not think they will be as bad as they were last year. They were horrible. Like, it was horrid to watch. It was literally like watching a sample team come in and just perform at a level that you expect. And that's no fault of their own. They have constant injuries. They had COVID issues that they had to deal with. Um, they just didn't have that right confidence about them and they just lacked energy and they had a lot of injuries and they just everything fell into the worst possible case scenario for them last year and it was unfortunate but at the same time they found themselves in positions they could win there's a game against Collingwood uh, where they did win that game it was very good to see they um, obviously bet I think it was Essendon at home as well they were very very comfortable there and they found their way to really um, navigate themselves around in the back half of the year and be really really competitive so with that being said, I don't think they'll jump massively, but watch out. I think West Coast are going to bounce back, and they have been proven to finish quite low on the ladder the year before and jump right up again. In 14th, I have St. Kilda. Now, you, you might be thinking this bottom five is very predictable, a lot of coaching changes, a lot of injury sagas. St. Kilda, for me, with Ross Lyon as coach, is going, are going to take a back step before they take a step further into um, a potential finals opportunity. Now, that's not to say they will surprise again this year. Ross Lyon's a very, very good coach. They've done really well to recruit, um, and I really do believe they'll have a different type of confidence. And whilst their off-season has just been the, the most bizarre and horrid off-season you could imagine, topped off with an injury to Max King, who's going to be out for majority of the year, they have a caliber of players where I feel like they can surprise a few. 
And if they do that, they're going to have a lot on the jump and on the edge of their seats. And I think with St Kilda and Ross Lyon as coach, he's going to have a settled lineup. He's going to have the ability to play his style again and really just implement a, an attitude into this playing group where regardless of how the outcome looks, they're going to continue to fight and, and continue to provide a, uh, a proud game style that I think St Kilda fans will be able to take in. So they could jump, they could slide. It's going to be really up to them, but I have them 14th at the moment. 13th place will be Adelaide. Unlucky for some, lucky for Adelaide. I think they're going to really be competitive this year. Um, and as a Port fan, that does scare me a little bit in the, in the sense that I think they're going to jump a few. They did it last year. Um, you know, the games where they really looked comfortable with their own their own game style and their own ability, they were they were really capable. Um, and and they dropped off in the second half of the year, and that was probably understood with their young talent and young list. In fact, they dropped off quite a bit. But I think the way they've recruited the guys, like Rankin now, I think Matthew Nix has a strong attitude with them in this preseason where they know they don't have expectations to make finals, and nor should they. You know, they're still in improving in a rebuild, um, and and I think they'll jump a lot further than 13th probably showcases in terms of how they'll go about it. But I don't think they'll play finals. I think they're going to be a very hard team to beat heavily. They'll be very, very competitive, and I think to watch out for a few of their players and um, you know, uh, with, with with Dawson being uh, the new captain, I think you know they're going to have a different leadership style. They're going to have a very different point of view, and and probably an attitude. As I said, the attitude change is going to be massive. I think that's the sense that they need is to have that freedom and have that sense of relief constantly, because then they'll be able to mentally apply themselves to a game of football for four quarters. They might not be the most skillful team, but they'll definitely be able to um, definitely implement different things that will allow them to be uh, I don't know competitive. It's really hard to be positive with Adelaide when you really have this showdown hatred with them. I don't hate them that much, but, you know, I think it's it's kind of cool to have a rivalry like that, isn't it? Number 12, I've got Essendon. Now, I don't know how to look at Essendon at the moment because they really are the... I don't know how to describe it. Um, the real up and... It's like a roller coaster for them. One minute they're in the finals, they don't obviously win in the finals, and they have a good first half of last year, but then they, they sort of... Actually, they didn't have a good first half of last year either, actually. They, they had a pretty disappointing 2022 and really were uncompetitive at stages. I was surprised a few teams and they were looking in good touch, but then they dropped off at the end and I really do feel like that they're going to either really bottom out or they're going to sit in that complacency period of being 12th. They'll be competitive. Um, I think overall, the recruits of the the Davy brothers and, and you know the father-son picks are going to be really energetic for them. Uh, they're going to have some improvers. They've got some real talent. Uh, the change of captaincy there with um, McGrath being vice-captain and Zach Merritt being captain and, and Dyson Heppel stepping down is a really good change. It's a good uh, mental change for Dyson. I think he could have a, a renaissance of a second half of his career. Um, well, I say second half. I really do think just later stages. Um, but overall, where Essendon didn't see it, I'm not exactly sure. It's hard to pick. When you get into that 11 to 15 bracket, who could jump? Um, but overall, I'm just going to say they're going to finish 12th for now, and we'll see how they progress. The one team I do think drops um, out of the eight, and they finished eighth last year, and they lost to Fremantle after being like seven goals up in, in the second quarter is the Western Bulldogs. I really do find them interesting. They have a great crop of players. But I think the, the, the happy period of, the honeymoon period even, of Luke Beveridge and, and, and the grand final is now seven years old from 2016. They don't really have that competitive hunger, that edge like they had in certain periods of last year. I don't see them having that consistently. I don't see them having that consistently. That's just my opinion. It could definitely change. They could be a top four team. They've got that talent. They've got that caliber about them, but there's just something about they lost Dunkley. Um, you know, they're all a year older, and I just feel like I mean they, they did bring in Rory Lobb, but it, is it going to play a part on them to be successful in 2023? I'm not sure. Do they have an eagerness about them to be competitive with the top four teams? I'm not sure. The danger signs is coming off of 2021, and and sort of relinquishing that greatness that they had going into the grand final and being that let that was basically ripped out of them within seconds I don't think they have that edge to make it to finals this year and that's just my opinion but I 
yeah, they've got the caliber, they've got the playing group, they've got the coach. I think Luke Beveridge is a very good coach. Whether or not it all comes together as one big successful concoction is yet to be seen. But I'm picking them 11th to drop out of the eight. In 10th, and I really hope they play finals. I really, really do. Because I think, and I'll say the Gold Coast Suns in 10th, they're going to be competitive. They were very competitive last year. Do they make the finals? I just think that the next nine teams are better. I don't know what it is, but I just think they're better. If they catch a team off guard on a, on their day, Gold Coast are winning. They, we saw that with Fremantle. We saw that with almost beating Port Adelaide. We've just seen them be competitive. Can they do it for a full year? Can they do it be to be competitive enough to win games? They should. It's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. But I think they just miss out. That's only because I think there's nine other teams ahead of them that are just better. Just better. With, if Shuey Ju makes finals, I'm becoming a Gold Coast member, though, because I seriously love them. I love the way they go about it. I think the hatred towards them because they're not a Tasmanian team sucks on their on, on everyone else's part because I really want to see them be successful. So, And I have a, a small love for Shuey Ju. So I think them overall... We'll be 10th. If they make finals, I'm going to be more than happy. I don't care if I get that prediction wrong because I just want to see them go up and, and make the most of what they can. Uh, I think 12 years after being in the competition, it's about damn time they made finals. In ninth is Port Adelaide. Now, I hate saying this. I've predicted Port Adelaide to be in the finals every single year of doing these predictions. Every single year, I think, bar one. Could have been wrong. But regardless... I don't think we make it this year, and I think we sack Ken Hinckley. It just, it just spells danger signs that we're going to fail again. But we've been a very re- good uh, response team where we, if we let someone down or if we, if we fail, we bounce back up and we go again. We've, we've always been that team the last couple of years. Can we do it in a season where it is most defining? I'm not sure. I don't have as much confidence we have the caliber. We have the team that can take us to the next level. We recruited well with Junior Rioli and Jason Horn Francis and the rise of Connor Rosie, the, the fitness of Butters and Dersma, the, the aging like fine wine that is Travis Boak and, and the beauty of Ollie Wines and the, the barometer of Charlie Dixon. This is not a Port Adelaide preview. I'm just stating that there is so much going for us that every single time we have a massive pro list, there is always just two or three little cons on the con list, and that ruins everything. So whatever happens from here, I hope this is reverse psychology, picking Port Adelaide 9th, and we end up winning the flag. Simple as that. That's all my reasoning is. Okay, so that's been my bottom 10. We're about to go into the top 8. So if you've gotten this far, let me know in your comments below what you think of the bottom 10. Am I going to be right? Am I going to be absolutely wrong? Probably. Just really feel like this year's going to be make or break. And that's not for any team. That's just for me and this Able Predictions. Okay, the top eight. Eight is Collingwood. I don't think they'll have the year they had last year. And I'm very much sorry to Collingwood fans that I picked your 17th. I have copped it, let me tell you. I don't think you'll have the year you had. I still think you'll be competitive. I still think you have great um, momentum out of last year. And you'll have that hunger to come back again. Whether or not it all goes right for you, uh, I'm not exactly sure. And you'll have Port Adelaide, Gold Coast, um, and, and so forth, biting at the bit to be in your spot. I think you make it. I think you'll do damage in finals. I don't think it'll be anywhere near as much as what you did last year. But that's only because I still believe it wasn't fully... I I don't know. I think it was a little bit fluky, yes. But I think overall, uh, reality sort of kicks in and you don't have that luck twice and lightning doesn't strike twice. But it could. You just don't know. But I just feel overall that Collingwood will be eighth. Be competitive. And once you're in the top eight, anything can happen. Seventh, I have Fremantle. I've got two reasons why I do think Fremantle won't be as competitive last year. I think there's teams in the top eight already that will improve again. And for Freo to improve, they have to have a massive, massive jump and probably more input from Nat Fife. Secondly, their fixture is horrid. Like, it is dreadful. If you're a top eight team and you've got Fremantle's fixture, God forbid you put in a complaint. Because, oh my Lord, watch, seeing what they have in the first 10 games is just ridiculous. So... Good luck to Fremantle. I hope they be competitive. I'd really love to see them. They're another team. They're like Gold Coast. I'd love to see them be successful. Uh, it'd be such a fantastic story. And I feel like, they again, they'll make the eight and they'll be competitive and they might do some damage. Um, and if you're a Fremantle fan watching, don't worry. I'm on your bandwagon. Sixth is Melbourne. 
The straight sets exit really fascinates me because I feel like that has more of an impact on you than losing a prelim. Because I, even though Brisbane have done it multiple times and they've still made a prelim, they've still bounced back, I just think it will have an impact on Melbourne. I don't know whether it's the, the, the years after the grand final, you sort of get a bit more complacent and you're like, well, can I get to that level again? You start to question it a little bit. Um, the attitude can change. I think Simon Goodwin is a very, very good coach and can keep that consistency. But overall, I, with the Ds, I just don't really feel like they're going to have as much of an impact as people think. At one stage in these predictions, I had them ninth, and Port Adelaide were in the eight. So I, just thinking about them overall, they've got a great list. They've got Petrarca, they've got Oliver, they've got the forward line. Uh, to compete. I, I do feel like that overall they're going to be competitive again, but I don't know if they're going to be premiership contenders. In fifth, now if you're a Carlton fan, and I know a lot of you, you're going to do some damage this year. You're going to make the eight. You're going to be successful. I don't think you'll be top four. I think you'll get a home final in fifth, which means you'll play Collingwood in the final series. <laughs> Just realized that. <laughs> That's sensational. Um, but overall, I, I the, the list is there. You know, you've got a great crop of players. You probably got complacent going into the back half of last year with the fact that you were 9-3 and three at one stage and just really felt like that you were going to do a lot of damage. That happens. It's, it happens to the best teams. You get complacent. You think it's just going to naturally happen for you, and it falls away. Um, and, and, you know, I, I do feel like with, with a fit Kerno, a Mackay, that's going to be amazing again. You've got Cripps. You've got Walsh. Doherty down back. You know, you've got everything in every part of uh, the ground that's just going to be successful. Whether or not you use it is another question, but I think you'll finish fifth. You'll get a home final. You're going to dominate. You might make a prelim, and it's going to be a great year for Carlton. And we get into the top four. Now, a lot of this is chopped and changed. I'm going with Sydney in fourth. I do feel like that Sydney have a premiership in them. Whether or not it's now... I'm not sure because the smashing in a grand final can do a lot of damage. I think they have a very, very good culture that's going to allow them to bounce back and not let themselves settle for what they had to endure on grand final day last year. In saying that, I do think it's going to have a bit of an impact early on in the season. It definitely does with um, you know, a, a lot of teams. And you know we've seen in the past that you know, the likes of GWS after getting pumped in 2019, the Dogs had a slow start last year, Port Adelaide in 2007, you know they didn't make the eight in 2008, so it it has pros and cons about it, but I think they'll be good enough to, to finish in the, in the top four. Third, I've got Richmond. I think the recruits are sensational. Um, having Taranto um, is just going to be absolutely outstanding. Um, I think. It's going to create depth. I think a fully fit and a fully committed Dusty is going to do a bit of damage. Tom Lynch is just going to be another level with his forward line craft. Overall, they're just going to be a very dominant team again. And um, if they fall away, I'll be very, very surprised because I think they, they are very much capable of taking this one out in 2023. Sitting in second, I've got Brisbane. Uh, they have a consistent finishing second, Brisbane. I think overall, they're going to have a good crop of players. They've recruited Dunkley. They're going to have um, you know, a fully fit, Danaher, they're going to have the capability. They've lost McStay, which might be a loss, but I think they've just got a great crop of players that are premiership worthy. Um, Dane Zorko stepping down um, as captain. I think Lockie Neal is going to take that spot. Um, and I think overall they, they're going to have a consistent run out at Fagan's got a very, very good crop there. If they don't make the finals, let alone the top four, be very, very surprised. And they're a very big chance for a premiership. Very big chance. And in first place, if you're a Geelong supporter, yes, it's Geelong. You're going to go all the way to the final series. You're going to get first spot. You're going to be minor premiers again and probably have a massive opportunity at making another premiership tilt. Do you fall off as an elderless, as a, an old folks home playing football? Probably not. You're just going to be there again because you always are there again. And I'm trying reverse psychology like I do every year with certain teams. It's just not going to work with Geelong. They make they 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 be my they be minor premiers. They're going to probably make the grand final, and they're going to just be another dominant team. No, Joel Selwood probably hurts a little bit in terms of you know that that leadership and and that presence on the field. But you'll have Dangerfield there. You have Hawkins there still, and you're still going to have a very very dominant dominant crop of players and a couple of youngsters coming through as well. Um, I think 
Holmes is going to be fantastic. I think the recruitment of Jack Bowes is going to have a, a massive impact. I think he's going to find his feet at the Cats. So there's a lot to look forward to if you're a Cats fan, and there's a lot to look forward to in 2023, because that is my hour for predictions ladder. Now, let's get into the Coleman medal. Tom Lynch from Richmond. Simple as that. I, he's going to be competitive. He's going to kick goals. They're going to have a lot more of an open forward line, and they're going to look very, very good, and they're going to be winning games. And then when you win your games, you kick goals, and who kicks goals? Your forwards. So Tom Lynch, you're right in there. Coleman medalist. Brownlow. He's going to be Took Miller. Deserves a Brownlow medal of this man. He is the treadmill. That's my nickname for him because he just keeps on running. Seriously amazing footballer. Great, great presence on the field. He's got a natural talent to get the footy. And he gets picked up by the uh, by the umpires. And I think if Gold Coast are winning more games of football this year, he wins the Brownlow medal. And my final prediction is the Premiership. Who wins? I'm tipping the Brisbane Lions. I think they win. Playing at the Gabba is going to be very, very... A massive bonus. It always is playing up there. They've got a round one against Port Adelaide that's going to be absolutely crucial. Away from home at the Adelaide Oval. They win that. They're right on their way because I think they've got a very, very favourable favorable draw. They're going to be consistent. They're going to have a massive impact on this season. And they are very, very dangerous. And when they get to finals, if they play anything like they did uh, last year against Richmond and, and Melbourne and, and be competitive, they're going all the way. Well, Port fans... And all other AFL fans, I should say. Thank you very much for watching my predictions for 2023. As I said, at the start, subscribe to the channel if you're new for plenty more AFL content to come your way. And if you're a Port fan, jump on board. Plenty more Port Adelaide to come your way as well. Primary is Port Adelaide, obviously. But, you know, we're diving into different parts of the AFL world. And I look forward to bringing you the glass table with Jared Thomas coming March 6th. To so make sure you jump on board. And, uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts on my predictions for 2023. Let's hope... For the love of God, get this right, or some of them right. And I hope the only one I get wrong is Port Adelaide, and we win the flag. Anyway, thank you for watching. My name is Anthony, and as always, gun the pair.